Hello, welcome. In this video, we're looking at a parent function of f of x equals the cosine of x. And we're trying to use that parent function to graph g of x, which is equal to 1 minus f of pi plus 2x. And we're doing this over the domain of negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. And we're going to do this by hand, and then we're going to check our work with algebra. And this story that of transformations that's happening, it's kind of encapsulated here in g of x, is really worth your time. It's, it's much, uh, I think, more universally helpful to apply these transformations by hand than it is just to plug it into a calculator and see what happens. It has a lot of rich connections to all kinds of things in mathematics. So um, that being said, let's get started. Let's see how this works. So I would grab a ruler if I were you, if you're just working on paper. Um, but here I've got my y-axis and my x-axis. I'm gonna try to give myself plenty of room. And I know that um, I want to start by graphing my parent function, so I want to graph between 0 and 2 pi. So I'm going to try to make nice intervals for that. Let's say that's pi over 2. Okay, so this is pi. This is 3 pi over 2. And this is 2 pi. Now, if this is 1 and this is negative 1, I can get a pretty decent sketch of the cosine function. All right, it goes down to zero, dips back up, to, goes down to negative one, dips back up to zero, and then finally one. It completes a cycle in two pi radians. So there it is. This is my function f. That's my parent function. Now, there are a couple of things that are happening here to in, in terms of transformations that help us create g of x. A couple of things. So we want to be clear about the order in which we're transforming g of x from our parent function from f of x to g of x, we're doing a couple of things. We're starting off with our horizontal transformations. That's where we're starting. And with the horizontal transformations, we start with translations. And then we go to dilations and reflections. And you saw that. In previous problems, we can interchange dilations and reflections. And then we move over to our vertical transformations. And vertical transformations will treat in the opposite order. We'll start with dilations and reflections first. And then we'll move to translations. And these aren't arbitrary choices. The fact that horizontal and vertical transformations are treated in opposite orders kind of mirrors everything else that we study about them. You might have noticed that the way the transformations work for vertical and horizontal are opposite of each other. And the, therefore, it's nice that the orders in which we treat them are also opposite. That helps us make sense of all this. And what we want to do now is just track what's happening step by step. This piece right here, this tells us all we need to know about the horizontal transformations. And the coefficient here, I'll say negative 1 here, and here tells us everything we need to know about the vertical transformations. So let's start with the horizontal transformations. We're adding pi radians, so we're going to go left by pi radians, and then we're going to dilate it by a scale factor. Well, so it's 2 here, so the scale factor is 1 over 2, right? So let's see what happens there. Let's do those two things in two separate graphs. So first, we have to subtract. Uh, we have to move left by pi radians. So, okay, let me just get a couple of points here. This is negative pi over 2. This is negative pi. This is negative 3 pi over 2. And finally, negative 2 pi. All right, so every one of our points is going to go to the left by pi radians. So I'm going to take this point first here. And then this point, this point here and then this point here, and then this point, uh, don't tell me, is pi over 2 here, and then this point is pi. So we've moved it over. I'm going to lightly sketch that. And then we are going to compress it horizontally. by We're going to compress it, multiply it by a scale factor of 1 half. So the distance between the y-axis and each of our points are going to be cut in half. So this point right here is going to move here. This point here, here. This point stays in the axis. This point is going to go here. And this point is going to go from pi to pi over 2. So kind of scrunched. Let me do it on a dash. 
we scrunched that cosine function in there. Okay. Now it's getting a little bit cluttered, but this story that the transformations ends up being really helpful because now you might notice this, but here's negative pi over two and positive pi over two, and our function's already living in that domain. So now we're going to move it vertically, and it fits so nicely. Let's do what it's asking us to do. Let's reflect it over the x-axis. And the scale factor is just 1, so it's not going to be stretched at all. But if that were a 2, you would also, let's say, double its length from the, the x-axis. So we can take it and now flip it. I'm going to say that vertical transformations are in red, black. On the screen there, it goes from the parent function and all the horizontal. I should have made it blue, but whatever. Okay, so first we reflect, reflect, it's reflecting vertically, so it's reflecting over the x-axis. Scale factor SF is one, it's a one. So I just take, let's say this point here, and reflect it over here. Points on the axis stay where they are. This point is gonna move up here. This point stays, and then this point is gonna go down below. And then we have this function here. And then finally, we want to look at the vertical translation. We're going to go up by 1. So we take all of these points, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and move them up by 1. So this point is going to move up here. I'm going to color it in. This point is going to move up here. This good point, point is going to move up here. This point is going to move up here. And this point is going to move up here. So we have, this is our function right there. Nice little cosine function pointing straight up. It's been reflected. And um, we, you know, we're going to check this in a moment with algebra. But I, I just want to point out that this is the transformation process and how it works. And we start off horizontally and mess around with it and go vertically. And we get this nice picture here. And it's probably worth your time. Take a moment. You want to label these points. You've got 0, 2. This is pi over 4, 1. This is pi over 2, 0. And then over here we have the opposite, negative pi over 4, 1. And negative pi over 2, 0. So that's our, that's our graph. And now we want to check this algebraically. Um, and we also want to look at this in another way. We want to see, is there another way to think about this function in terms of the order in which we perform our transformations? And another common technique is to rewrite g of x. So you can rewrite it like this. We're going to use factoring. 1 minus f of, in this case, you factor out, I'm going to reverse the order first. So it's 2x plus pi. And in this technique, what you're going to do is factor out the coefficient of x. So it's 1 minus f, factor out your 2, and you get x plus pi over 2. So from this perspective here, this is telling you the same thing. But now what's nice about this is that you directly can see the phase shift of the function. Um, and they call it a phase shift. And here with the 2, you can see uh, that that horizontal dilation by a half. So how can you do this? Well, this is telling you that you can start with your parent function, and now what you can do is you can go to the left by pi over two radians, and then you can scrunch it by the scale factor of one half. And then this will get you to the exact same spot. It really will, it's quite amazing. So uh, the nice thing in it, going from this order, 